Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. Unfiltered commentary. And that's your truth, the real truth. Please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thank you for your support. Welcome back. I decided to do a little short little video on a city in central Tennessee called Crossville. I'll be going there in the next few weeks. And um, I'm seriously, seriously, seriously considering moving there. I live in upstate New York. For those of you that live in the south, especially in the Tennessee area that I'm referring to, no, I am not a whack job liberal Democrat. I will, if I move there, I will not be bringing my... I'll call it my virus called progressives, progressivism and all the other crap that goes along with it. I'm a former Democrat, now Republican, and freedoms here in lost in New York have been horrendous. The taxes are just incredibly horrendous. One of the number one reasons why I sold my business recently, I had for over 20 years, is because of the property taxes. Just my little small building and an empty lot next to it cost over $500 a month in city, county, and school taxes, and including my house. It's just incredible. That's not counting all the taxes and fees, the state taxes on top of that. So I decided to do a little small I guess I'll call it episode on Crossville. I got some pictures offline here. That's the old movie theater that's downtown. Um, it looks really cool. It's probably old school. They probably don't show regular movies anymore, especially with COVID. But these old movie theaters, movies in general, I love movie theaters anyway. Even with streaming, nothing beats a movie theater. But I'll tell you, look how cool that place is. And this is a picture of, I guess, quote, unquote, downtown Crossville. Now, my understanding, I think there's 10-odd thousand people in the city. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. It is the county seat. It's just a little bit east of central Tennessee. It is a great area. I've been there a couple of times already. I'm going down to visit there in the next few weeks. And it's just an amazing place. Everything is there. Everything you want. Grocery stores, full-size hospitals. You name it, they got it. And they're getting a lot of, I'll call it Northeasterners and people from California. I know a YouTube channel that I follow is Hoag, H-O-A-G. He's from Southern California, and he lives in eastern Tennessee, closer to the mountains, also extremely gorgeous, right by Maryville, which is a great area as well. It isn't, you know, even though taxes are important, I mean, let's talk the truth here. It's about freedom. And I don't mean just freedom to get in your car and drive wherever you want or shop wherever you want, even though that's being taken away in a lot of places. When you pay such high taxes, such huge taxes, that's freedom that's being taken. You go, John, what do you mean by that? Well, what I mean is, where I live in upstate New York, and New York City's worse, of course, and we're really far away from New York City, muzzle beyond Mars. I wish upstate New York would become a different state. Be a nice deal with, a, with Washington. Tell the Republicans if they could grow a set to say, listen, we'll give you D.C. statehood if you give upstate New York statehood, like they did with West Virginia during the Civil War. But I digress. I mean, that's nice, beautiful buildings. Old school manners. Nothing wrong with that. Judeo-Christian values, and now I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about values. It's different. And there's another spot there of the city hall. Uh, Matt Hogue, who does the channel that I watch, lives in eastern Tennessee. He's from Southern California. He said he pulled over one time on the highway to use his cell phone, make an important call. And when he looked up, a couple of cars had pulled over. And that's very common in Tennessee. And you're thinking, well, why would they do that? And they want to know if you need help. Uh, a neighbor that lives near Matt in eastern Tennessee 
had a huge tree come down in a storm early that morning. People were knocking on his door with chainsaws. A neighbor of his saying, uh, we're going to help you take down this tree. Don't even have to be asked. That's the way America used to be. That's the way my town used to be here in upstate New York. There's about 45,000 now. When I was born in 1956, there was about 85,000. And they've all left. And to lose 45% of your population, actually we lost probably 70%. They were replaced with New York City transplants, and you can fill in all the blanks with that. And there's another uh, picture. I believe that's the, that's the courthouse. And there's another beautiful, beautiful site from the area. Upstate New York is beautiful, too. The problem is we're just attached to New York City, and it's never going to change. It's never going to change. I struggled for 23 years in business. Took a lot of my adult life. And I'm wondering what the hell did I do it for? I'm 64 now. I'll be 65 this November. Is it too late to start over? I don't know. Is it? It's never too late. And if you wait just for exactly the right situation, you wait for exactly everything to be right, you're never going to. You're never going to find the right situation. You just have to take a leap of faith sometimes. There's a nice bridge. Isn't that beautiful? What an area. Oh, by the way, Crossville is the golf capital of the world. There's a ton of golf courses around there. So I played golf about 30 years ago a couple of times. Maybe I'll take it up again if I move there. But it's beautiful. There's another picture. I mean, how stunning is that? You can see on the right there the uh, sand traps for the golf course. My God, my God, I go out on a day like that with a big blue sky and clouds. Holy crow. You can't get any better than that. You can't. And there's an aerial view of a property. It's just just stunning, just stunning. And there's no, that's a beautiful mural too, by the way. And those of you that have this southern thing, well, you know, I watch, it's a southern thing, a channel I hear on YouTube, and stereotype that southern people are stupid and they're slow and they're lazy and are you out of your mind absolutely out of your mind they're the most diverse more most open most friendly most welcoming people in this entire country or in the south and there it is crossville golf capital of tennessee i think that's what a big water tower i think there's a beautiful waterfall one of their parks and I'm just going to go through some pictures here. Here's a festival they had downtown. I mean, if we had a festival here, I ran a chess club behind my convenience store for many, many years. Every Saturday from 12 to 5. Tables and boards and sets set up. Beautiful uh, pictures of chess stuff all over the walls. Very convenient. Tons of parking. Bathrooms within 10 feet away from where you're playing. A gentleman that would give lessons to kids and adults for free. And I got one, two, sometimes three people. People have given up up here. They've just given up. And what have Americans always done? When things are going south where they're at, what are all the immigrants that came in the 20th century, in the late 19th century? They gave up everything to come here. I mean, look at this. Look at these people. They're all friendly. That gives you an idea where it is. Uh, Crossville, and there's the sign coming into town. Must be the fall time with the pumpkins. Yes, it does get hot there in the summer, but they have winter too, and they have fall. There's another picture of the uh, movie theater and some other buildings in downtown Crossville. There's a, there it is lit up the movie theater now. How cool is that? How would you like to go to the movies there, boy? Some of us older people, we see that and we sigh. There's a beautiful waterfall in one of their parks. And they have a uh, car show once a year. You see there's some cool cars there. They close downtown. There's, this, I believe it's the police station on the right and the city hall on the left. A beautiful fall scene. It looks like here, up here in upstate New York like that. But we're attached to New York. And we're attached to the, the morons in Albany that are just, it's like drop by drop. It's like a frog in the, in the boiling water. You don't know until it's too late. And it's a shame, too. I should have left 25 years ago when I had the chance, and I didn't because I'm from here. 
Uh, both of my parents were still alive now. Now it's just my mother. She's going to be 84 soon. And both of my kids live out of state. I do have a lot, a lot of cousins here, a lot of friends. And it's going to break my heart. There's a beautiful golf course. How nice is that, that little waterfall? I wouldn't even mind being a caddy just walking around. There's another beautiful picture there. And the golf course. Look at that waterfall. How nice is that? If you go to eastern Tennessee, not too far from Crossfield, less than an hour drive, absolutely stunning. And there's the woods, uh, all kinds of woods, and beautiful uh, lakes, streams, ponds. And there's that picture again, and there's another one there. And there's what shows you on a map where Crossville is basically... And there's the state flag of the state of Tennessee. And it's just a, it's just a marvelous place. Just a marvelous place. And I, I, I encourage everyone, everyone, to look at the situation you're in. Look at where you're at and think about, can I do better? Am I happy here? Is my family now. I, I live alone. I'm divorced for a long time. My kids live out of state. I live alone. I'm not happy here. And it's going nowhere. Quality of life to me in the last 10 years has been incredibly important for me. And it gnaws at me. And I know that I'm not happy here. And it's a shame, too, because this is the town I grew up in. All my memories are here. This used to be a booming place. You could find a job in a day in Binghamton years ago. Now, 20, 25% of the residents don't work at all or refuse to work, one of the two. Many are disabled, that's true, but there's some older guys walking around. There's nothing wrong with them. The state just gives them disability because they're unemployable. And it's just, it's just a shame. It's just a shame what's happened. And there, I'll, I'll focus on this picture of uh, this for a while. It's just a shame. And I have a close friend of mine that lives there. They said, you can move here tomorrow or five years from now, I have an open invite. And I am so grateful for that. I am so grateful. And I visited there a couple of times. I'm going to be staying a few days and swing around and see my daughter, her husband, and my granddaughter who was two and a half years old and they live in Virginia Beach so that'll be pretty good in June pretty hot though but it's tourist season if that moron governor they have open up the state I'm beginning to think Virginia is in the south anymore but anyway Tennessee is and so is North Carolina South Carolina Georgia's having a hell of a time Albany or excuse me Alabama still is Mississippi Florida Texas, Arkansas, Oklahoma to a certain extent. This is what America was. Friendly people. Friendly people. Uh, somebody knew me by name. They would call me Mr. John, out of respect. And if your name, say, was Mary, you'd be Miss Mary or Miss Irene or Miss Angela or Mr. Richard. You open the door for people when you walk into buildings. You say, yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. When I used to have my convenience store, I'd have a young African-American kid. So he was probably early 20s, and he would say, yes, sir, no, sir. And I would say, well, what part of the South did you grow up in? And he would go, how did you know that? I said, well, because you have manners. Or they would say, my grandmother or my mother was raised in the South, and if I didn't say yes, sir, or no, sir, I got coughed in the back of the head. I can't even tell you how many times that a young person will walk through the front door of my store and have an older person behind them, elderly, and just close the door right in their face. We, we lost that sense of community to care about each other. It's all narcissistic nonsense. Don't get me wrong. People are narcissistic by nature, but it's, it's gotten out of control. Crossfield isn't perfect, but neither is anywhere else except for Evan. And none of us are there. Hopefully, most of us will get there. But for now, 
we have to go someplace where we feel like we belong. I'm old school. Crossville is old school. Another weird coincidence. My friend that lives in Crossville and also several friends of mine, some of my family here in upstate New York, said, you know, why don't you look for a sign from God? And those of you that aren't religious, I think sometimes weird coincidences mean something. And I was doing some research on Crossville, and it's in Cumberland County. And the county was incorporated in 1856, I believe, or 55. And it was incorporated on November 16th. And it's also my birth date. And I went, holy crap. I think that's the final sign I need. I think that coincidence is just too, too much. It has to be the way to go. Sometimes you just have to take a leap of faith. And I think that was the final thing that pushed me over, as weird as it sounds. I wanted to leave you with a quote. I think is appropriate. I hope people get something out of this, especially you younger people. Don't waste 20, 30 years of your life being somewhere where you're unhappy even though you love the place. It's like loving somebody in a bad relationship. They've changed. It's time to move on. My town has changed. The old school way of doing things are done. Manners. Just simple common courtesy. Friendliness. It's time to go. I'm going to leave you with a quote I heard. I'm not sure where it's from. But the quote is, we must be willing to get rid of the life we've planned so as to have the life that is waiting for us. And until next time, folks, goodbye and good luck.